This is, this is uh, probably uh, the largest audience we've had for, our, for, for, the, for the first lecture. Uh, obviously that's also, well not also, that's mostly a, a testament uh, to uh, Marilyn Broadwick and what a, a wonderful photographer she is. Uh, but it's also a, a testament uh, to uh, resilience. Uh, which grows uh, in age. I, aging is a very confusing uh, time. I, I say this as a participant observer. Um, <laughs> and and uh, uh, it's very poorly characterized. It's characterized probably best in, in poetry and in literature than it is uh, in science because it's so many different themes that are overlapping. Uh, one is uh, the increasing wisdom with age just because a life gives us uh, so many opportunities uh, uh, to, to learn as we go. And then there's the resilience. And then there's the, just the fact that when you, I only take care of people in their 80s and 90s, and when you only do that, you, just, you, you, you tend to, to miss certain personality types. There are very few angry octogenarians. And I, I don't know if, if angry people learn, or I prefer to think maybe they die off. Um, <laughs> but. Um, it, is a, it, is a, it is a selection uh, a, a, as we get older. Um, Marilyn Broadwick was, I think, the, uh, it was either the first or second person I hired when I uh, got to UTMB in, in 1992. Jean Freeman, an epidemiologist, uh, faculty member who I saw come in uh, and is here somewhere, was the other one. Uh, and Marilyn, uh, I hired as a, as a research assistant. Uh, to uh, help us in uh, setting up studies of older people. Um, and uh, one of my uh, sort of, uh, I don't know if it's a strength or weakness, it's a characteristic as, as, as uh, uh, running a program is to try to find uh, what each person uh, is best at and, and see if that would be valuable to the organization and let them do that. And so essentially, um, <coughs> For the first year, she was a research assistant, and then for the, the next uh, 20 years, she's been a photographer. <laughs> to, uh, and, and, uh, and also helping uh, with our uh, uh, volunteer work, helping, uh, help, helping uh, Helen Appleberg in some of the community work. Um, about 11 years ago, uh, or 12 years ago, she, she's always been a magnificent uh, photographer, and many of you have seen uh, some of her exhibits uh, around town. And about 12 or 13 years ago, uh, I convinced her to uh, do a series. She, she liked taking pictures of older uh, individuals. And I convinced her to put together a volume um, um, of her uh, photographs, uh, which was called uh, Faces of Aging One. Uh, and uh, it was uh, uh, just magnificent uh, uh, photographs, very arresting. And it was, it was when we were relatively new. The Sealy Center on Aging was, was just trying to uh, get established and raise our visibility. And so we sent it to, obviously, all the leaders at UTMB, but we also sent it to all the deans uh, of medicine around the country and everyone else who was running a, a geriatric program or a center on aging and to foundations. And it was just, um, it was, uh, just so gratifying uh, to get the letters, uh, the personal letters. This is uh, fortunately pre-email uh, uh, from uh, these individuals talking about uh, uh, what a wonderful uh, volume this was and, uh, and, and uh, thanking uh, her uh, for it, uh, producing it. Um, actually thanking uh, me, but, but I told her about it um, later. Um, and so um, about a year ago, uh, we almost ran out of volumes, and uh, the information on it was dated, and I thought, and, and there'd been a big turnover at, at UTMB and nationally. I thought it was time to do it again, and, and Marilyn uh, uh, graciously agreed. And so, and there's uh, copies of uh, her uh, Faces of Aging uh, book, which you can get on your way out, and I'm sure she'll be happy to autograph them for you. Um, and so uh, tonight, as opposed to uh, usually when uh, we, we have a scientific presentation, we invite uh, people from the community, uh, both the UTMB community and the greater Galveston community. But tonight, we just want Marilyn to 
uh, be uh, presenting her uh, pictures, not just the ones in the volume, right? But just and and just uh, perhaps talking about uh, about uh, the, the process. So uh, I give you Marilyn Broadwick. Okay, this is the first Faces of Aging, done about 11 years ago. And those were mostly photos I had already done. They weren't specifically done for the book, they were done with film. I don't think digital cameras were invented yet. And this is the new one, it just came out about a week ago. And um, it's different in that I set out to get people that lived in Galveston. I, primarily, everybody lives in this area. and. Um, I also did interviews, you know, short interviews, and um, uh, it was also, you know, uh, done with natural light. I didn't use flash, um, and I went to people's homes. So it's done pretty quickly because elderly people can get a little impatient sometimes. Um, and some of the people were very busy. It was even hard to get um, scheduled. So. Some of the questions people have asked me, you know, why black and white? And I think it, I think it really works for the elderly, especially it's kind of nostalgic. It draws attention to them. Um, and uh, is sometimes more dramatic. You know, otherwise sometimes with colors, you just focus on the colors and not on the person. Um, how we decided which people would go in the book, it was, um, we put them up in Sealy Center on Aging and people scored, you know, ranked them. There wasn't a whole lot of consistency, but um, that's how we arrived at who would go in the book. Uh, another thing um, people ask is, why the elderly? And the truth is, I, I photograph everything. I mean, there's probably nothing that doesn't interest me. I don't do birds, that's about it. But um, I'm especially attracted to the elderly, and I think one reason is that people don't um, pay enough attention to them. And it's been very rewarding. Um, and one thing I've also found out is that as much as I love the little photo sessions, I later find out they've really enjoyed them too. Um, and I think, you know, um, capturing, you can really capture an elderly person, their character, more easily. Um, uh, I've grouped the photos in some categories. And the first are the centenarians. So this is Melvin Campbell, and he's in the audience. He's sitting in the front row. <laughs> and he's amazing. I mean, he's why I love doing this. Um, he's going to be 104 in March, which is remarkable. And you know, I think the only problem he has is with his knees, but as his granddaughter told me, if I'd walked around for 103 years, my knees might bother me too. Um, you know, he cooks, he drives himself to church on Sunday, and his granddaughter told me he's not slow either. So I told him, let me know when he's on the road. But um, uh, I asked him, and I asked, you know, everybody, what's your secret to longevity? And he told me faith. And, um, but when I brought him a book last week, he was drinking um, water and garlic. So it turns out he puts fresh garlic cloves in water, and he's been doing this since he was in his 30s, and he drinks this every day. So uh, who knows? But I mean, he does it thinking it has health benefits, and you know. This is uh, Fanny, and she's 102, and um, she would have been here tonight with the weather, you know, and she lives on the West End with her grandson, Kyle, and um, he brought her down to the beach. I heard about her. He brought her down to the beach. I mean, she's also amazing. Grew up in Donny, Texas, and just came here um, because she needed some help. And so her little great great-granddaughter was at the beach with her, and she was not at all pleased. I mean, she was scared of her. And um, 
But now, several months later, I, you know, that they have a very good rapport. This, she's gotten used to her or something. So I also asked uh, Fanny, you know, her secret to longevity, and um, whatever she said wasn't this, but I found out accidentally she puts raw onions on everything she eats, everything. So I don't know if that's a secret, but she has a great disposition. She's surrounded by, you know, three generations. Now, this lady, Jean, uh, Los Angeles, um, I took this photo last week, and um, if you look at this, I wonder how old you think she might be. Um, a clue is that she's in the centenarian section. So she's, she's 100, and um, she's also, my, my cousin takes care of her a couple of days a week just because she's legally blind, um, but other than that, She's in great shape, and her, she lives with her son now. She has for the last two years, but before that, she's living on her own, playing duplicate bridge, and it's only the vision thing that slowed her down. Um, so she uh, refuses to go to a doctor. She won't take any medicine. Um, so I don't know, maybe that's her secret. And she, she keeps telling you know, us that she eats lots of fruits and vegetables. She watches her weight. She kept telling my cousin and I how great we looked, and eventually I connected that she can't see us. <laughs> it's like, but we're busy feeling really good. And uh, there she is. She loved being photographed. I mean, she was just, you know, loved the attention. That's her son. I've got to find out how old he is, because he may be older than he looks, too. This is Bertha Lee. She lives in Galveston, was a BOI, born on the island, and lives in a nursing home here and is very well liked. Um, Here's some more shots of her. It's kind of hard for her to talk, but she seems to understand when you're talking to her. And you can get a smile. And this is her on her 100th, it was 100 and their birthday. I went over there for her birthday and they had her all fixed up and hairdo and manicure and um, you know she's she's very popular there. She's the oldest resident. And this is Haiti and she's a hundred Galveston. Don't know much about her. This is Uncle Mutt and I was lucky to be at his birthday party too. Um, and it was the first one of his entire life. So he was tickled. Um, he'd had really a rough, you know, life. And this is Uncle Mud again. He has no relatives left. You know, unlike um, Melvin, who's just surrounded by family in Galveston. Now, this is Iva. That was also Galveston, 101. And it was really hard to get a time with her. She's such a busy lady. Um, she uh, plays and teaches bridge. She was on a food committee. She says they don't listen to women. You know, she was busy telling them. And um, she says she hardly has time to rest. She wished she had more time to rest. She was about to move the day after I photographed her. And they were not going to let her have um, cook anymore, where she was moving into. So she told me she was going to sneak in a convection oven. <laughs> this is Mrs. Brown. She's going to be 100 tomorrow. So when I started this book, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have geriatric twins? I've never seen them. And so I asked everybody, and nobody uh, knew any. So I, I was uh, photographing the woman on the right, and in the conversation, I found out she had a sister. And then I found out her sister lived in Beaumont, and she was an identical twin. So I quickly made arrangements to get them both together. So I, I went to Beaumont, and I took the one on the right. Um, so they uh, are extremely competitive. I mean, they fight, you know. 
And, um, but they love each other and they really miss each other and they lived together for many years until about three months ago. But they were both were comparing. One was like, I don't have to wear my glasses all the time and you do and things like that. <laughs> they, it was. So I asked the daughter um, why her mother, the one on the left, had far less wrinkles. And she said her mother never used soap on her face, she only used ponds. The ponds knew this, it would be such a great commercial. But, um, and the one on the right smoked and walked and was outside. They both are big walkers even to this day. And I don't know if I said their age, they're, they're 92. Now, these are obviously non-identical twins, Dorothy and Doris, and they live in Galveston, 85. Um, one was actually born on a different day because, you know, it was after midnight, and that one bosses the other one around. Um, but they're close, too. They live across the street from each other. They both were LVNs at uh, UTMB. And this set of twins, uh, oh, that's, that's more of, of Dorothy and Doris. It's, it's very annoying that they, they make the name so similar with twins. It's hard enough, you know. So these are identical twins. I mean, one of them weighs a lot less because she's not been well, but um, so I think it's hard to see a little bit how, how much they look alike. They're Eve Renee and Emma Renee, and that was in Houston. And they are very devoted. They've, their daughter said they never fought. So now this is a section on couples. And um, this is Marianne, Marianne, and she's, 93, no, 90, she's actually 97 now, but she was 95 when I took that picture, and Harry was 98. So I'm gonna show this quickly, a, a little series, and then I'll explain it. So um, they didn't know each other. I had just introduced them. We were at the Bundan Living Conference. Because um, when people have seen the photos of them, they thought, oh, a nice old married couple. Well, um, I said, oh, you need to meet each other. You're, you know, so old. <laughs> you know? And, um, and then I, you know, put them behind a, a, there happened to be a screen there, and I started shooting. And, you know, I did suggest they kiss, but they were very cooperative. And, um, <laughs> They were flirting, so I guess it just doesn't change when you're, you know, 97. Um, and then, um, and they both just had a great sense of humor. So I really planned for them to be married by the next year. Helen thought I was pretty silly, but um, we arranged, uh, <laughs> we arranged a, a meeting a year later, and here they are again. And he had not been too happy until she arrived. So, um, so this is a couple in Guatemala. I was there for Dias de Muerto, and they were in a cemetery cleaning um, graves. And I asked them to pose, and so that's what they did. That, that would be a, maybe typical of the way people would think you would pose there. So then I gave some direction. Um, maybe you could hug her or put your arm on her. And, and then, <laughs> I'm sure this had never happened in her life. <laughs> so they were, and their son is watching the whole time. And so they had been married 71 years. And I confirmed it with the son. I don't know at what age they get married in Guatemala, but, um, uh, you know, the son was totally amused. So this couple needed no direction. This is um, Charlotte and Sammy Ray Galveston, and both um, 90, 93 and 94. A very, very loving couple. I think a lot of you probably knew Sammy. And, and um, another Galveston couple, um, Doris and Driscoll. 
Galveston, Frank, and Gloria Gusti, and um, Sharon and, and Frederick. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the next section, I didn't. Exa it's, I'm putting passions, but it's it's people like it's people like Helen. Well, they're not all like Helen. There's only one Helen. <laughs> So um, Helen is 83, and she's the head of the Sealy of the um, Center for Spirituality of Aging. And I worked with her at maybe, what, 14 years? And I can hardly keep up with her. I mean, she's still incredibly productive. And um, so uh, here's another one of her. This is Angel, he's um, Galveston, he's 84, and he was a barber. And um, at, first at the old Buccaneer Hotel. And then um, he still loves to cut hair. So every time I visited him, he tried to cut my hair. <laughs> so, I said, maybe another time. Um, but, He said how great it is to have done something that he loved. You know, and, and his little place is all set up with barber stuff. Um, so this is Lamana, um, age 87, Galveston. And uh, I first met Lamana in the Randalls parking lot. I, I try to keep a camera in my car, you know, because <laughs> you never know. And then um, I saw her, uh, ran into her a few months ago. And then there she is a few months later, because you can see her hair grew. She's just, I don't know if anybody knows her, but she's got these amazing blue eyes. It's really criminal to photograph her in black and white. Um, but. She just, um, she's such a survivor. You know, she lived through the Depression. She's very independent. She grows fruits and vegetables, and she makes her own clothes, mostly without patterns. And um, when I was over at her little place, she was making uh, food for a neighbor that was disabled, deep frying on the stove that looked very dangerous. Um, <laughs> no, but. Uh, and. This is um, Dudley and 94 in Texas City. And I really couldn't find out what his passion was other than he has a dog named Sweet Potato. And you'll see later, because when he's got Sweet Potato, which apparently they've taken him away from him recently, um, he would light up. And yeah, 94. And here's Charlotte. Um, 93. She has been a musician her whole life since she was five. She performed at first when she was five on the piano. And um, she loves people. She says she doesn't have time to look at the wrinkles, doesn't worry about getting old. And um, she's very involved in music and art, the Beta Club, and, and a, a real people person. Um, and Sammy, uh, 95, he was Charlotte's husband and the world's expert on oysters. So till the very end of his life, he was making new discoveries and teaching and doing research. Um, Eddie, Janik, 86, Galveston. Um, I met him when I was with you, Janie. Right, right after you get at Randall's coffee shop, there's a little group of elderly men that meet for coffee. And there's several of these around town in different places, but I've never seen a woman's group. And I kind of was starting to wonder, wonder what that's about. But so um, it was mostly people that were in the military meeting at Randall's. Um, and so he walked in, and I felt like I should take his picture because you know, I'm so I, I come to my studio, which was in the corner of the coffee shop. <laughs> And he had amazing stories. He was a county commissioner. He told me he lied to get every job. But I mean, he, he's great. <laughs> um, 
And I, this was a lady in Alvin, and I figured jewelry was probably her passion. <laughs> Mabel, I was just driving down the street, and she was planting tomatoes. I stopped the car, and um, I visited her a couple times since. She has a lot of wisdom and advice. She grew up, you know, with 11 siblings. She said in a time when everybody shared everything, um, and she feels like people don't do that anymore. But um, she has all these sayings like, don't let anybody tell you you're ugly. <laughs> this is Bill Lassiter. He's 82, and he's in Houston. He's an art collector, and he volunteers at the Museum of Fine Arts for Ann Tucker. A lot of these people have, are volunteers. Bill again. Um, oh, and this is Eileen, who is here today. And um, <laughs> and Eileen is 90, and I hope you all get a chance to talk to her. Uh, a friend of mine kept telling me about this amazing dancer who danced in high, he high heels. So about a year later, I finally got went up to Clear Lake, took her dance class, met her, and. Um, she still competes, still takes lessons herself, and she still gets trophies. Um, so she grew up in England, and it was part of the curriculum to dance. And she met her, her husband that way. And she's here with her, her son, who I've heard is an amazing dancer too, and Rebecca, her granddaughter, and her daughter-in-law. So um, <laughs> this is one of her pictures. And she's such a good teacher. She has a huge following. And they say that the reason there's so many gray-haired dancers in the Bay Area per square inch or whatever is really because of her and her, her late husband, Rex. Um, they really brought ballroom dancing to the area. Um, this is Hedda. She was 99 when I took the picture, and a week later, 100. So this is in San Rafael, California. Um, I've known her since I was 18, and I have to say she might be the most amazing woman I've ever known. She was a pediatrician, and she kept up her grand rounds until she was 90. Um, when she moved into a retirement home, she decided that people needed stimulation, so she started teaching social studies to keep their minds alert, and also she uh, to try to change their political views. <laughs> and, um, she's very funny and always the life of the party, but she really wants to be kind of left alone. She's a, you know. <laughs> but um, this is her, she took me to a show where she works out every day in the gym, and she knows how to work all the controls, and. She's very disciplined. Um, Gloria, 82, and she's one of our volunteers at the ACE unit. We have, um, at the Cute Care for the Elderly, we have some wonderful elderly volunteers. And um, Gloria plays the piano, so that's her main role up there, which is wonderful for the patients and for the staff. She was a um, nurse for 37 years at uh, GISD. And now she's the musical director at a church. And she's uh, just, most of these people are just extremely involved uh, presently in some way in their lives. Um, she's another example of that. Um, Gertrude Barnstone, um, Houston, 87. And you may have heard of her. She's an artist. She designs sculptures. And sculptures, and um, now she has an assistant because she can't physically do it. But um, she says she wouldn't want to be young. She likes what she is now. And so she's very much in the present. Um, she was also on the school board in, in Houston and helped integrate Houston. John Gorman, he's here too. <laughs> so I tried to make John look old enough for the book, but he's really not old enough. He's <laughs> like, what, 69 or something? <laughs> no. But he's an example of somebody with passions. That he's been writing poems since he was a kid. And he's still doing that. And he's a professor at U of H. 
He's one of the most popular teachers at the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. Um, I've taken some of his classes. He leads the Poetry Roundtable, and some of us go to that. So he's pretty amazing. And there's a detail of John. Is that okay, John? <laughs> no. <laughs> Photoshop, you know, they're not really there, it's just Photoshop. <laughs> So this is Richard Stout, 78, Houston. He's also a very well-known artist and still having shows and extremely productive. So the next few show people's environment, which I love. I, I mean, most people I'm shooting in their own homes or whatever, and it really tells a lot about them. This guy, it was in Corsicana, and you know, I, he just goes there. He doesn't do any work anymore, but he just goes there every day. And, I, and I've noticed that several times where people just keep going back, you know. Um, and this is Marian again um, in her, her home. And you can see, you know, her family and genealogy is very important to her. And I talked to her just uh, right before I came. She, you know, she really wanted to come. She's, she's 97, but um, a little treacherous going over the causeway for her. And this is somebody in a nursing home, that, you know, making, making the best of her environment. Um, this is Benjamin and Alvin, and he paints all day. His, his room, and it's a assisted living, it's just filled with paintings. He also plays chess on the computer. This is uh, Selena Treath in um, 79, and this is in Wellfleet, Massachusetts. And I don't know if you knew um, um, Marvin Treath. He, I mean, Norman Treef, he was an environmental toxicologist here, and this is his sister. And I really met her accidentally, which is kind of amazing, since Norman was my first advisor in graduate school, that I should have just randomly kind of met her. She's still very productive, even though she's quite frail now. She's still painting and teaching and is a very well-known artist. Uh, she does a lot of self-portraits. Um, this is Ellie Porter. I don't think she's here. Um, most of Galveston probably knows her. She's 89, and um, she's been an actress. She's been an editor. Um, she worked at UTMB for a while. Um, she enjoyed being photographed. Uh, Mr. Lundy, um, uh, he's another, he's 87, and um, he's one of my favorite people. I, um, he, he had a mortuary in Galveston, and I think it got destroyed in the storm, and it's, you know, in his family, his grandfather was a mortician, his, his granddaughter's going to become, is in school to become one. He loves education, he says he's, He's education crazy, and he was in the military in World War II, and they sent him to Oxford for two years. He's also a jazz musician. He's a very interesting man. Um, his house was badly affected in, in Ike, but he won't leave. He has buckets all around to collect the water, but he refuses to leave his house. And that's Marian again, who could be the poster child for, you know, aging well. She, she was a judge, um, but now she, um, she volunteers uh, in Santa Fe at a mission, and she's a member of DAR, and I don't even know what all these things stand for, DRT, and looks like UDC, and anyway, and she's into ge genealogy. She would still be dancing, but she can't find a partner. That was a lady in Alvin playing bridge. Uh, Marjorie, um, do you know her? <laughs> Very much like 
Ah, so you could tell us about her. Well, she's remarkable, hard, very busy lady too. So she teaches piano and she plays in the Galveston Orchestra, but is it the viola or the violin? Viola. Yeah, yeah, she's quite wonderful. I, um, uh, and I think about 87. This is Willie. Um, he was also in his late 80s and um, played his guitar, played jazz every morning at the donut shop on Broadway. Galveston. And uh, Ed, um, Ed Cleric, he was a, he's way into his 80s too. He was a Rice professor and I met him at Ollie when it first started. He takes a lot of classes there. So, best friends. Benjamin with his cat. And I wasn't sure if cats could be best friends, but. Uh, this is Alice. She's, let's see, she's 91 and her dog's 15. So, <laughs> Alice walks every day for like a couple of miles, but the dog doesn't go for the walk. The dog's too old. <laughs> And she's a, she's a World War II um, veteran. And this is Dudley with his little dog, Sweet Potato. And this is John with his dog, uh, what is his dog's name? Buddy, Buddy, he found him on the highway. He's crazy about his dog. Relationships. So, Mr. Lundy with his grandson. Um, that's Stephanie with her mother. And, and Alvin, I just, I met her when I went out to photograph um, Uncle Mutt. And uh, she was volunteering there and then she took me over to meet her mother and she just was so loving and so happy to be able to care for her mom. Her mom had taken care of three generations of kids. This was at the Abundant Living Conference. Betty, right? right? I forgot her daughter's name, but I think they kind of look alike, right? We have a lot of mother-daughter that come to that conference. I, I love looking for the similarities. So here I couldn't find any. This is Rebecca who is here. She's an actress. Um, and she's so appreciative, you know, of her, of her grandmother, which was, you know, you sometimes wonder if they're old enough to appreciate, um, but she does. And this is Gloria with her granddaughter who spent the summer here with her. Elsie with a friend. And this is um, John with his grandchildren um, in Houston. And then this is the grandmother. She's one of the identical twins. Okay, well these are some that I took in other countries, Japan. Also Japan. They take wonderful care of the elderly there. Japan. And this is Guatemala. Mexico. And that's a woman. Everybody thinks it's a man. She, somebody told me in one of the geriatricians that she could tell if somebody's a smoker by where their wrinkles are. So <laughs> I don't know if that's true. And this was in Cuba. I got to go there last year. Um, a, lot of, a lot of elderly. In fact, they have a centenarian um, conference once a year in Havana, which would be amazing to go to. It's apparently kind of a political thing because it makes Castro look good. Look at all those hundred-year-olds. So, so much for what I said about um, black and white. Now I'm going to show you a bunch of color ones because sometimes it's just painful to, you know, convert. Cuba. 
my mom. I used to, I photographed my mom her whole life. She lived to be 93, and I, I'd be out somewhere, and there'd be some guy on a bench that was, you know, maybe a little different, and she'd go sit next to him and talk to him, you know, and that, so that I could then come in and photograph. And this is Gloria. Guatemala. Guatemala. Galveston. <coughs> this is Jack, and it's Galveston. He has 12 different patches, so I'm hoping to do a series. He, he has a great attitude. And, uh, again, Melvin. And he chose that color for his house. <laughs> And these are the twins again. We, we went out for a chicken somewhere, like Kentucky Fried or something. When, and this was a guy at a gas station on 45 somewhere. The smoker. And uh, often, you know, this was in Guatemala, but often, um, you know, you have to warm people up. Before, you know, they, they don't know, like, why are you taking their picture? And, you know, pretty much, like, there's not too many people I don't end up photographing. But, um, but. <laughs> Jewelry lady again. And this is Galveston couple, <coughs> Mexico, Chihuahua. And this is uh, the red hat, you know, ladies, and Alvin. Um, and these are the twins again, um, one of the grandchildren of, of one of them. And this is Mabel, I showed you her earlier. Mexico, and this is um, Bertha Lee's hands, you know, you know, 103 and she still has manicures, so. This is Lamana. I showed you her earlier, too. And this is the couple in the cemetery. Their hands have chalk on them from, you know, cleaning. So Alma, she's on the cover of, not this shot, of the new book, and she was just a wonderful discovery because um, my husband pulled over so I could take a picture of a, a shed on the side of the road, and then I saw her, and so I asked permission. I, I do always ask permission before I take a picture. And sometimes they say no, and then I keep asking. <laughs> so um, here's a black and white, a little different. Um, so she's 96, and that was a couple of years ago, and I met her driving to Austin. So every time I go to Austin, it, my big treat is to stop and visit her. And I bring her uh, crack wheat. She makes um, bread. and. She lives in a house that they don't even know how old it is. She was born in the house. It was her grandmother's house. It's on the highway. She remembers when there were horses and buggies. And um, other than a little while, she lived in a neighboring town. There was a tornado. She had to move back. But this is her sign. She's very happy to be photographed. She, and she knows when I'm coming, that's what's going to happen. But um, we, we'll sit and talk. and. So she's living alone, but she seems to manage. She's got really bad osteoporosis. No telling how old the house is. And she doesn't know why people aren't buying her baked goods. She said, is the economy that bad? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's my email, because if you've thought of anybody, you know, anywhere, they don't have to be in Texas, um, let me know.
because I'm always looking for subjects, especially centenarians and twins. And that's my website. My son just did it, so um, uh, he chose the photos, went on my computer when I wasn't home. <laughs> and so anyway, and that's all. <laughs>